Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I got a great show for you today. I got my friend Valentin Pitts with me. How are you doing today, Valentin? I'm doing great, Michael. Thank you. Excellent. So I'm really excited about this show because, you know, we're going to be able to talk about, you know, somebody who started real estate investing in the last couple of years, became very successful as a flipper, and now it's kind of changing priorities a little bit. So um, I'm really going to like this show. So why don't, why don't we tell everybody about your flipping business, kind of, you know, what you did this year and, and kind of what that looks like. Sure. Yeah. So uh, mainly I, I started uh, flipping houses um, and we, on average, we do about eight to 10 flips a month or, I mean, as you know, at any given time. Um, and, but just as you said, now recently, I just had a son, uh, my first, uh, first with my wife as well. Um, and yeah, priorities started changing. Um, and I've had my mentors kind of tell me before, uh, you know, rentals, you, you, that's where it's at. That's where the long-term wealth is. And I was just, I was having a blast flipping, honestly. Um, and, and now uh, he, he's, he just turned two months old, his name's Balance, you know, and I'm like, okay, let's, let's really crank this up. Um, you know, I look at his face and I'm like, I got to just, uh, just scale this thing up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing what a birth of a child or a new marriage, new relationship will do for priorities, right? Because, you know, you've been very successful flipping business uh, for a couple of years, um, you know, having seven, eight projects going all the time, you know, cashing checks you know, probably every month or at least every six to eight weeks. And, you know, yeah. that's, that's not a bad way to live, right? But then, you, you know, you, you welcome this new life into the world and you're like, whoa, that flipping stuff's a job. It, that's exactly that's exactly it. It's really a full time job, and um, and now my goal is financial freedom. Right, right. So, so, so let's yeah. break down the let's break down the flipping business first. As I understand it, it's it's you and a partner. Um, so why don't you kind of talk about your responsibility and his responsibility, and then we'll sort of we'll dive into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sure. So yeah, it's uh, myself, my business partner. I've actually known the guy since we were both thirteen years old. Um, uh, and it's funny, it's a whole different story of how we met, but uh, uh, to make a long story short, um, I used to, you know, I, one day I complained to my mom about not having name brand shoes, and she got pretty pissed off and said, go work in construction, and she knew a guy, uh, and that's how I met my business partner, he was also there, we were both 13. Um, anyway, so we decided in 2015 to go and, uh, and, and start flipping houses, um, and, and that's, what, that's what we've been doing. My, what, what I handle for the most part is all of the marketing uh, and I have my team uh, for marketing place. I handle all the investors, uh, all the vendor relationships and just uh, really overseeing that all the projects are done. And his main function is just he's out there on the field, making sure all these projects get done on time. It takes us about four to five weeks to knock out and complete a project and the whole time frame from, from the close uh, to, to closing it again. Um, is about four to five months. Yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, you know, first off, kudos to you for finding a partner that compliments you so well. It's, it's, I've seen business relationships sometimes where you're like, you're kind of like A and you're like A positive, right? But you, you've got, you, you, you've got your responsibilities that are clear and separated from your business partner and you both bring that skill set. So, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a great business relationship, it seems. So, um, yeah. You know, let's talk about that first year in flipping or maybe that first deal. Um, you know, tell, tell us about your first flip. Yeah, so the, the first flip was interesting because um, we basically decided to just flip, like I said, and I got a bank loan from Wells Fargo, a conventional loan, uh, and had an agent help me find a house. Um, it needed a lot of work, so um, we did end up um, closing on it. Uh, I honestly don't know how, but... Uh, it needed a lot of work, and we paid too much, honestly, for it. Uh, we paid about one forty for it. Um, other investors, I learned after, were were, were bidding about ninety thousand. Ouch. Um, yeah. So, uh, so we jump in. Needless to say, it was a two story. Uh, it was three bed, no, four bedroom, three bath house, um, with a pool that needed uh, a total remaster as well. Um, so we. Uh, we created a budget, or uh, what we thought was a budget, of about thirty thousand, um, and uh, we ran through that really fast. Um, and it was a learning experience. It really was. Um, I think that was 
the main test for us as, as business partners and you know are we going to really continue in this business is this for us um and i remember sitting on the floor there uh, in the evenings having dinner and we we're like i don't know if we're going to make it out of this thing we just bit off a little more than we can chew um but we pressed along we finished it uh we actually turned a small profit um and after that I had another uh, another project lined up for us. Uh, and this time we went straight into hard money and then shortly after private money. Yeah, that's amazing. Cause you know, there's so many sort of little nuggets in your story. First off, you go and take your first deal down. You both have full-time jobs. So you're doing this on the side, right? Kind of your side hustle. Um, yeah. You pay too much. Uh, you do get bank financing, which is doesn't always happen, especially in, in flips that need work. Um, you know, you, you, you test the relationship. You really make sure it's for you. And, and lo and behold, you do turn a small profit. Doesn't always happen in those first deals, right? Lots of people lose money the first time. Um, but, but I'm sure there's lessons from that first one that you still remember today, right? because I'm I'm entrepreneurial by nature so um, from there on we started basically systemizing everything and just quantifying what worked, what didn't work on a project by project basis when you're first starting um, and just trying to improve and be more efficient on each flip uh, so so that sometimes those things actually make you better and in our case it did um, and from there we really haven't looked back that first year uh, we closed out uh, 10 deals and uh, like I said we, we just kept growing and, and, and doubling the volume that we did and never looked back from there yeah so so tell me about how you moved from you know that first bank loan and then you went you know hard money private money that's that's a leap that a lot of new investors struggle with so 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 you know give a little color on those first interactions because you you were like me you went hard money first which is what I did did that for a transaction or two and then I went private money so Talk about going, talking hard money your first time. Let's talk about that first. Sure. So for me, and in my case, ignorance was really a bliss. Uh, in a way, I, I basically started watching YouTube videos and Googling, you know, what is a LTV and what is an ARV and, <laughs> and all of that. And I thought I had just enough to, to carry on a conversation with the guy. I didn't know anybody uh, as far as private money. So I just started asking everyone that I did know. Um, this is what I'm doing. We had a project going on. Now we had our second. So I felt, you know, I had something under my belt. Um, and I just asked everybody that I knew if they knew somebody uh, that had money that was interested in making more than what they make in the bank. And uh, we found uh, a retired doctor or the fetus that, um, that believed in what we're doing. That's awesome. And then that was and then, one of our first private money investors. That's awesome. And then you've since grown that to a, a, a list of, of multiple people that you, you bring transactions to. And uh, are they just loaning today uh, the purchase price, or do you get purchase price plus a portion of make ready, or how, how does that work for you roughly today? So, so now with the private money, it just allows us to rise up so, for so much flexibility. We get the full purchase price, and then we also get. Uh, for, for all of our rehab costs as well. So essentially, we're just going in, doing the work, and uh, we're not coming out of anything uh, out of pocket ourselves. Very cool. Um, of course, you know, uh, it, it takes, you know, they have to have a lot of, con the deals have to be good, and there has to be, a, the, you know, a lot of spread because it, is, it can be dangerous for, uh, yeah. for somebody to win on that. But, um, but that's where the marketing comes in and getting the right deals and presenting the right deals to investors. Yeah. And that's, and, and most importantly, that's your track record speaking, right? I, I know lots of private money guys that have, that have, you know, stacks of cash. They don't, you know, they don't do that out of the gate, right? If you're a new investor and you're hoping that somebody's going to loan you purchase price plus repair price or repair costs the first time, you're kidding yourself. Um, you know, don't be greedy. Realize this is a long-term business, this is a people business and be happy to get you know, shoot, be happy to get 90% of the purchase price on that first project uh, and then go get make ready and, 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 you know, do more from there. So um, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's my words of advice. 
a hundred percent agree. That's that's yeah. And and then and then you know, like a lot of investors, they ask, you know, how do I get into it? Sometimes you just have to get the deal first, and then the money follows, and everything else follows. So I I would um, agree. Yeah. So why don't we talk about your your side just real quick on the you know leads, right? Because it all starts with getting leads, and you and you own that as in your partnership. What are you doing? Mailers, door knocking, you know, trustee sales. What what, what does that look like for you? Yeah, so we do uh, NODs and, and we do door knocking. I do a, now we started doing uh, cold calling and you know sending out text messages to to our list. Let's get tracing the list on the first. Uh, doing all of that, all of the direct mail, just really targeted list that we found that worked for us. Um, networking is really big for us. Um, uh, I have my realtor's license, um, so just networking with other realtors, other investors. Really, anybody, you know, just strike up a conversation. And I've had uh, my wife bring me deals actually, just because her friends or family really needed help. Uh, so, networking is really big too, in addition to all of our marketing efforts. Yeah, networking is, is you know, again, because real estate is a people business and, and uh, I, I freely admit that I made the mistake thinking it was all about spreadsheets and, you know, just, you know, being, you know, a, a cheap really, but it is a people business. The more pe- you should tell everybody what you're doing and, and, you know, you, you can do some pretty big things. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, yeah, sw- exactly. you, you exactly. switch priorities. So let, let's talk about that. So you're still, you're still flipping, you know, you're doing, uh, you know, 24, 25 transactions a year. But now you're now you switch to buy and hold. You've seen what wealth creation is. You have a son, and and you want to do big things there. So let's let's talk about what buy and hold means to you. Sure. So that's really important to me. Uh, uh, so it's uh, I've had I've been fortunate to have a few people that that are older that have uh, mentored me and and just you know were telling me the, the importance of this. And um, so now that it finally clicked. Um, we have the entire, you know, I have all of the private money guys and all of the contract and everything for our flip. Um, and not every deal works for a flip. So when I go in and say talk to a seller, um, I'm not necessarily looking at it from just, you know, I'm going to buy this all cash and flip it out. I kind of now I ask them more questions, follow up questions. What are you looking to do? I mean, which we always ask, but I present them uh, different solutions. Um, you know, for example, a recent deal, not to get too much into detail, but he's moving to Arizona, uh, in a few months and he just refinanced his house and he's sitting on a large chunk of money. He still has enough equity for me to be interested. So we did a subject to deal, uh, but it would not have worked for a flip. So now the, the list and the, the leads that we get in, I'm looking at those as rental properties for myself personally. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, what, what do you feel about owner financing? Is that uh, do you look for owner finance deals and things like that, or? Sure. So this is what's really exciting to me because I'm totally 100 percent on board with what you preach, which is the market, you know, has made its corrections and now it's on a decline. Is what I feel as well. Um, so with that being said, I feel owner financing deals and just really a lot more creative deal uh, deals will be. Uh, more prevalent and yeah. easier to get. Um, so my number one goal is to make my investors happy. Now that I've accomplished that, um, that's how I'm planning to scale, um, whether it's buy a cash, uh, put in some money and refinance out of it, or do it creatively. But I feel when in a down market is when uh, I'm gonna acquire a lot more uh, rental properties. Right now, um, I'm at eight and I just put two in escrow. So it's, I'm going to be at 10 closing escrow. And I really want to scale that up, especially as the market trends downwards. Yeah. I think, I think you're, again, you, the stuff you're doing is just so spot on because you've built up the skill experience. You are very creative in your deal structuring. And as the market rolls over, um, that's going to serve you very well. I think you're going to be able to pick up a lot of more holds, um, because you're willing to do subject to or owner financing or, or these other things, because you know, just sellers are people, right? And, and they they may get stuck on a number that was last year's number. Yeah. And, you know, you can't buy it at that number, but maybe, but maybe you can, 
if you can owner finance it with low rates or different terms or delayed payments or whatever, right? So um, uh, I think you're going to be very successful with that. That's pretty cool. So yeah, I, I, I'm curious, you know, you know, I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway, is w- when you look for flips today, given you have a, a contractor kind of GC partner, are you just looking for, you know, paint and, uh, you know, new kitchens or you looking for big old nasty projects or what do those things look like? Sure. So I found that a lot of people, especially when starting, a lot of investors are looking for the cosmetic fixers. And of course, I love those too, uh, but they're not as common. So uh, our, our kind of our model is we will basically say anything that has, you know, a good spread. So I don't, we don't shy away from, uh, gosh, anything really. I mean, the nastiest stuff you could think of we've done. And that's kind of for a while been our niche, you know, where people are like, I don't know about this. I'm scared about this. And we, you know, we know what we're doing. We're young. We have the energy. We go in, knock it out. And sometimes those are the ones with the biggest projects. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, I, everything I do um, is to try to swim in ponds with less competition. Right. And what you've just done is you've taken, I don't know, 80% of the flippers out of the way by going and looking at that stuff. Yeah. Um, and I remember there, I bet there was a deal that you looked at. There was a, there was a $15,000 house in Madeira. I think it was like 2,800 square feet ranch style on like two and a half acres, but it also had a, <laughs> it also had a huge hole in the roof from a fire, probably in the kitchen. I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing you bet on that or at least looked at it. I, I haven't, I, you, you call it a hole. I thought it was a skylight, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yes, I have, uh, those are the ones that we bid on. Um, so, awesome. uh, uh, yeah, I, we've been on those type of properties. I, I, you know, I've had success with a lot of, uh, flood, flood damage. So mm-hmm. I, I work with a lot of the adjusters, uh, some adjusters that do insurance and so flood damage, fire damage properties. We take those on, um, just le- you know, just learning how to work through the process. Once, once we figured that out, we've had great success. I'm curious on a flood house or a fire house. Let's just, I don't know the answer. So I'm going to learn something. So let's say the ARV on that house is 250. It's been flooded all rooms, right? You got to strip the, strip the wood four feet from the ground or whatever that shit is drywall. Um, are you getting that for like, like 50 K or 80 K or I mean, how, how much of a spread is there? Yeah. That, so, so typically, I mean, it, yeah, we get it for like 50, 80, 80 okay. 250 ARV. Um, and, and what happens is sometimes the owner, they already got their, you know, yeah, they got cash out from the, they're not going to, so they're just happy to take the, the 50 K and run with it. Right. Know, bonus um, okay. But like you said, 80% of the flippers or investors kind of shy away from that. Um, and the ones that are in it, they want it for 30. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we'll give you the 50 and you know what we're doing. We'll get it done. Yeah. So I, I guess, in your flips, is your repair bill or make ready or whatever you want to call that is at least sometimes bigger than the purchase price? There are instances that, that yeah, there is okay. bigger than make, the purchase price, yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, but, and then, but when you do that, right, when you add the value, which is that, your, your spreads and your profit, that makes perfect sense to me. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's how the investors look at it too. They're like, okay, so ooh, my all in is this, so yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that, that's wonderful. Good for you. And now do you go all, do you just stay in Fresno city or you go Fresno County or how, how far do you go for, for transactions? Uh, so right now we're just in Fresno, Fresno Clovis. Uh, okay. I've done stuff in Dainu, but not often. Um, we try and have our crews here and we just try and have it as systematic as possible. And sometimes I do go out, uh, but it has to have a, a, a bigger spread than our normal yeah. stuff. Yeah, again, that's that's wise, right? I think I've seen flippers sometimes have crews in you know five different cities around Fresno, and pretty soon they're on the freeway the whole time. They're not getting any work done. Yeah, uh, but what's interesting uh, for Reynolds now, uh, definitely, you know, Weasley and Kingsburg and Dainu, but those cities now for Reynolds because it's a hold, so we yeah. do market to those out, outlining areas. Um, but for flip, we try and keep a Fresno focus. Again, close to it. Genius. Flip where you are, keep your teams close, get economies of scale, but your holds, a hold's a hold, right? It, you know, secure it and you're, you're good to go. So that's, that's very cool. So let, let's, uh, let's go back and talk about the beginning, right? So you met your partner when he was, you guys were 13, your mom kicked you out and said, you want some fancy shoes, go pick up a shovel. Love mom, by the way. That's awesome. 
<laughs> um, her, her biggest lesson she, she, she let me learn. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go get some calluses on your hands, son. <laughs> um, so, so you take on the first project, you know, when did you guys go, you know what, this is going to work. We're, we're going to quit our jobs and go all in. How was, how, how'd that look? So we, uh, so after the first project, uh, like I said, we got two others and I would say, uh, we started that, we started our first project mid 2015. Around mid-2016 is when we both had that conversation and said, you know what, I think we have something here. Um, at least we, you know, we at least supplemented our income, um, so we can definitely grow it, and we both uh, decided to go full-time. Um, so that means everything. I sold, I owned another company. I sold that off right away. My wife thought I was absolutely lost my mind. I've had that company for like 10 years um, and just went all in. And sometimes, well, for me at least, that that's how it, it needs to feel all in or, or not at all. So yeah. we both made that choice. That's, that's awesome. And you made it together. That's, that's huge, right? There wasn't like one of you was quote unquote more committed than the other. Uh, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Um, you know, so what did that feel like that f- first year? So the first year you did 10, I'll call it working part-time. Uh, what was it like that first full year full-time? As far as uh, the, the yeah, transactions, what, what, anything different? Did, was you surprised by anything? That no, kind of- I think it just, it just got, it just, we just dialed it in more. So I think we ended up doubling the, the volume the, the, the second year after that. So I think we were about 20 and it just, you know, it just got, uh, got easier. So we weren't on the, having dinner on, our, on the floor at one of our clips anymore. Um, <laughs> I was out there getting deals, getting investors lined up. And he was out there knocking out those projects. Yeah. And again, you guys are doing, you know, if you're doing 20 a year and, and all of that, you, you have somewhere between five and eight flips going at, at any one time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, you know, constantly we're trying to grow year by year. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, it's just making the adjustments to, I'm a, I'm a believer that um, it's not just about volume. You know, if it takes me to do 40 flips and I, and I can make the same doing 30, I'll take the 30 if I can be more efficient in my operations. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm big on, on efficiency and the way we operate our company. That's very cool. So let, let's fast forward now. So let's, what, where are you going to take this thing in three to five years, right? So, um, you know, actually first, let's go with, so you switched to buy and hold. You've got 10 because you got two in escrow. What's your number for next year? How many are you going to add next year? So next year, uh, and we talked about this uh, uh, interview, but, but so with, with your input, I, I want to say it's going to be 15 next year. That's, um, that's a great number. I like that. 15 next year, yeah. 15 the year after. And again, it's, it's going to be the right kind of stuff, right? It's not, it could be all over the Fresno County. It could be subject to, it could be uh, private money. Uh, I think you're going to, I think your leads are going to go up and your flexibilities, they're just going to, not quote unquote fall in your lap, but they're going to present themselves because you're open to it. So sure. I think, I think yeah. that's really cool. And, and then it's, and just being creative. I, I, there's a, there's a property that I picked up. that was list, you know, I mean, we look at the, at the layout and wasted space and if it's like a two bedroom, I'll make it into a three bedroom. And then in that case, I'll buy it cash. I'll make the improvements and then I'll refinance out into long-term, you know, park it yeah. long-term. Um, so just really looking for value at stuff in, in rentals as well. Yeah, that's that's genius. All right, so let's talk about three to five years. Out, where 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 are you? Where's your business? Where's your family? Three to five years. What's that look like for you? Three to five years. I want to be at about fifty uh, rental properties uh, personally. Um, flipping. I, I, we're just going to continue where we're at. We're going to just do twenty five, thirty a year um, as far as flipping. Um, and, and really, that's the, I want to do the 50 because it just, I'm young right now. And, and there's so much damage that we can do. And then from there, of course, I'm going to clean everything up. And I want to get into notes because I see my investors, you know, I'm like, that is not a bad passive return. <laughs> so I want, I'd like to get into notes. And, and right now I have a self-directed IRA that I'm, you know, doing some things out to kind of put it on steroids so I can be, be in that position. And, and you know, uh, so, but yeah, uh, and then with my family, uh, with my son, um, I actually, I was born in Russia and we came here in 92, I was seven as, uh, as refugees and we, we all got a citizenship and, but I have a sense of what it's like to, you know, come from a different place and what it's like to be here 
And I'd really love, and, and my wife's parents are from Cambodia, so we'd like to do some, uh, live abroad for a few years, maybe two, three years, just live abroad in different places so you can get different perspectives of how the world works. And you know, it's not just what you know here. Yeah. The world's a much bigger place. Yeah, I think, I think introducing that, first off, having the vision or even the thought about doing that, living abroad is, is, is just special, right? You're going to, that hunger you have, you know, coming from Russia here and, and just that, and just being an immigrant and just, just working. Sometimes when you're born in the Americas, right, you get soft, frankly, right? Like, you know, hey, mom, give me a nice pair of shoes. And, you know, they show up the next day as opposed to go out and, you know, pick up a shovel. I, you know, it's, it's, it's just yeah. a different way. So um, I think that's a great goal. And do you, do you have anything anywhere special? You know, you're going to live for two years or you're going to bounce around every three to six months or how, how does that look? Yeah, we, we're going to bounce around every three to six months, just experience different places, different cultures. Wow. Um, yeah, and and, ju- and this is the beauty of real estate uh, because we have I have all the teams built in. I feel like it's be abroad, and you know, having property management built in, they can they're going to man- they're managing my rentals, um, and that's the key too, though, is to be smart up front. So I'm building in the property management fees on my buy. It doesn't mean I'm actually outsourcing it now, but when I am ready to leave. I'm going to have that, that capital to pay property management and it's not going to trap my own cash flow. That's um, awesome. So you're, so again, just to, because I think this is what you said, but I think it just needs to be said again, you're going to go live abroad, but you're still going to run your business. You're still going to have your rental portfolio because all you need is a computer and a phone, right? That's it. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Also, and, and then just the, 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 the feet on the ground that you built over the years. So. Oh yeah. Feet on the ground. Yeah, feet on the ground yeah. So I, I can imagine you sipping a pina colada in some Caribbean Island going, Oh, just bought another one. Yeah. Right. Um, well, let me ask you, 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 you retired and came back. I, I fear that I'm going to have that same syndrome. I don't know if I can sip pina coladas for too long. Um, so I may come back a little earlier. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, um, Travel is awesome, uh, but home is great. And um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's it's it'll be fun. I, I think I think doing it for purpose of, of showing your son, uh, and maybe who knows another one along the way, sort of a different part of the world is that's just an awesome goal. And uh, I look I look forward to I look forward to the Facebook page of all the posts and pictures. It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. You got. We're looking it. forward to it too. Yeah. So, you know, as we wrap this up, I, I want to turn it over to you, let you share how to get a hold of you, share your, your, your site, ask for anything or buyers or private money or whatever you want. I'll just, I'll just leave it to you and let you bring us home. Yeah. All right. No, I appreciate that. So again, my name is Valentin, you, you know, as you guys will see, and the best way to contact me, I'd say is email. Uh, my email address is Valentin. That's uh, no E at the end. So just like Valentin, no E at the end at webuyhousesinfresno.com, uh, phone number 559-495-8601. You can find me on Facebook under Balancing Pits or uh, my flip uh, company is Building Dreams Redevelopment. Uh, we're also on Facebook. And really, shoot me any deals. If you guys are starting out and you don't know what to do with a deal, uh, give me a call. Uh, even if it doesn't work out as far as me buying it, I'd love to be of value and, and you know, let you know what it's worth. Um, and we're always looking for private money uh, just because, again, uh, the deals are always there and I hate to uh, pass up a good deal. So always looking for private money as well. Um, and that's about it. That's very good, man. I really appreciate what you're doing. I think, I think, uh, I think this, this video is going to be watched by a lot of people because they're going to see your hunger and passion with the flipping. You kind of got that wired in. Then you're kind of changing your scope to buy and hold wealth creation you have goals that are very achievable, right? They're not like, I'm going to have a thousand units. No, I'm going to have 50 in three to five years. I want to go travel the world with my family. I want the business and systems put in place. It's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be awesome. So uh, I wish you the best of luck. And I want to thank you again for uh, being on the show. It was a pleasure, Michael. Thanks for having me. I had a blast. You got it.